Hi everyone, my name is Trent Dragseth. I'm the sales application engineer with Electro Industries. Today I'll be talking about connecting uh, Modbus to the Nexus series meters. So first of all, if you have a meter already, on our website we have the Modbus mapping for all of our meters. If you go on to our website at electroind.com, at the top here, you'll see products. On the products page, we have the Nexus 1500 plus 1450, 1252 meter. Down here, we have the socket version, our Nexus 1262, 1272. Today, I'll be connecting to the Nexus 1500 plus over Modbus. So if you click on this meter, under downloads on the right, you'll see tech documents. If you scroll down, you'll find the Modbus user manual. So this manual gives you a brief description of Modbus. I already have that open here. So the first set of pages will discuss uh, the Modbus layout, how all the data is formatted, and it goes over a brief description on log retrievals. In the middle of the document, if you just hit Control F, you can go and find, uh, if we type in one second, that will take us to the one second readings block. The one second readings for voltage A to neutral starts at register 180, so you also could have typed in 180. So you'll notice that the Modbus manual for the Nexus 1500 plus meter is 777 pages. Uh, because of the meter's capabilities, there are a lot of points and every point that you have available from the meter has a Modbus point registered to it. Uh, so for this video's purpose, we will be going over the basic values so in this case, I'll start polling at uh, register 180. If you already have our Communicator EXT software, uh, you can connect to the meter just in case you want to verify. This is my Nexus meter's IP address. Uh, if you have a brand new Nexus meter, the default IP address is 10.0.0.1. So connecting to the meter, you have the device status. So I know I'm connecting to the right meter. If I look at the polling screen, I have my voltages, currents, power. So what I can do here, A to neutral voltage, I should be seeing 124.64 volts. So if I bring up a Modbus polling software, this software is called ModScan32. To use this software, you hit connection, connect. You choose what type of connection you're using, whether it's an IP address or a serial connection. You'll type in the IP address of the meter here, the network port, default port for all of our Nexus meters is port 502. And you can click OK. It starts trying to pull. Uh, you'll notice that I'm not getting any valid responses. Uh, that's because the point type that I'm trying to look for is a holding register, not coil status. And my starting register address, if you remember from the manual, was 180. So if I come in here and type 180 and just look at one register, this looks correct because I'm getting 124. But what I don't have is the decimal point. So typically what we see with the Nexus meters when polling Modbus registers is 16-bit values. 
and you get the decent number here. But if I were to pull register 181, I get some large number that's constantly changing. That doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. The way these registers work is it's one value spread out across two registers, so 180 and 181. So what I need to do is set this length to two, and I need to make this one register. So in the setup, I'll go to display options, long integer, most significant first. Uh, depending on what type of SCADA system you're using, this might be uh, S32 for assigned integer 32 bit. Uh, it might be long integer, it might be LI, it might be DI for double integer, or it might just be double. Uh, depending on what system you're using, it will be labeled differently, but there should be some sort of long, double, or 32 bit integer option. So now when I choose a long integer value, this number also looks very incorrect compared to what we see in communicator. So the way these registers work so that we can get decimal points from an integer value is we make, we take this number from the manual, we multiply it by this value here, or sorry, this value here in units. So whatever number you're getting, this is saying to multiply by 1 over 65,536. So if I take a calculator, take this 814, 8,9, we'll just call it 7, 7, or 9, 9. So basically we have 8,148,000. If I take that number and divide it by 65,536, now I get 124.34 volts. So now my values are matching what I have on communicator. So even though looking at just a 16-bit integer value, register 180 did look correct. Uh, that does not necessarily mean that you have the right value. It does happen to work on voltage, uh, but if we were looking at current values, anything less than one is just going to show a zero. So you're only going to get whole number values. Uh, you also only get secondary values from these registers. So in this meter's case, if I go to the meter profile under general settings and look at the CT ratio, I have the CT ratio set at 500 to 5. So when I come back to the user manual, look for one second phase A current, try and look at register 188. And if I had this set up as just an integer value, looking at register 188, all I get is zero. So no matter what you multiply or divide that number by, you're never going to get 24.6. So we make this two registers long, set it up as a long integer, most significant first and you get 16,139. Divide that by 65,536, and we get 0.24 amps. And from the profile, I had a CT ratio of 500 to 5, which is 100 to 1 ratio. So if I multiply this by 100, now I get my 24.62. 24.65 in communicator. So pulling these registers, you will want to set up some sort of scaling on your SCADA system. And we do this for 
giving you these auto scaling and uh, decimal points for voltage and current. So the other thing we have is the energy field. Typically, when you're pulling a SCADA system, you'll want energy. Uh, we do give you primary energy values in the scaled energy block here on page MM68 or the manual, page 104 of 777. So if we come down here, we look at positive watt hours, quadrant one and four scaled primary. Coming back into communicator EXT and looking at the energy screen, my positive watt hours, quadrant one and four. You see quadrant one and four here. So I should be seeing uh, 778,547.5 with a number that's continuously counting up. So this register. We have 69.18 and 69.19. So here, you don't have to do any math to uh, get the actual values. This is giving you primary values with all the multipliers. The only thing you will have to do, because it is an integer value that we don't have to divide or multiply with, you do have to put that decimal point in. So I would need to multiply this by 0 0.001 or divide by 100 in order to get that decimal point to show up in here. Now the energy side is pretty easy. Uh, there was a lot of math on the calculator that I had to do on the uh, one second updated reading side. So what we do offer in the Nexus series meters, if I come back into the profile, under general settings, we offer a custom Modbus map. So using this custom Modbus map, you can actually add values, choose which format you want them to be output in, whether they're primary or secondary. Uh, so you can basically manipulate the Modbus registers how you need them to be. So we start our custom registers at register 12,289. So I've already got eta neutral, beta neutral, uh, voltage, I could add, because the voltage wasn't too horrible, we were able to see that. If I wanted to add current, instead of seeing the zero value, uh, under the group measured values, subgroup one second updated, scroll down to current phase A. Now I have register 12,293, I'm looking at A phase current. The format, you have a floating point, an unsigned integer, and a signed integer option. For the signed and unsigned integer options, you can also choose whether it's a 16-bit or a 32-bit register by choosing 2-byte or 4-byte. In this case, I'm just going to choose float. And I'll do the same thing with uh, B phase volt, uh, current. So you can come back in through here, choose B phase current. A shortcut you can use is the Modbus line and point numbers here, because this is one second current. 36 indicates one second current values, and the point indicates A phase. So I can just come over here, I can type 36. I can put a one here. And now that's updated to 
current B. So you have you have a couple options on how you want to set up these tables. Once you create that, you hit OK. You can update the device. When you're updating the device, it asks you to check which options you don't want changed. So I'll just hit continue here. These settings will write to the meter. While this is writing, you lose connection to your SCADA system, but we can just reconnect once that pops back up again. And I will, while we're waiting for this to restart, I will mention that the custom Modbus mapping uses six digit Modbus addresses, not the five. So if you have an older skit system that might not support six digit uh, Modbus addresses, you would not be able to use this custom Modbus map. Um, I have worked with Kepware in the past and that does support the six digit Modbus addressing. But if I come back in to look at this map, register 12, 289 should be a floating point value, eight a neutral voltage. If I come back into mod scan, connect back to my meter, this value again looks strange because I have the setup point as an integer value. So again, in display options, I'll choose floating point, most significant first. And now I'm getting 124.44 volts. So now I don't have to do any math on my SCADA system. All the math is done through the meter. If I switch to 291, now you get a weird number like this. And that is because this value is a signed integer. So switch back to long integer. And I have 123, 528. Because it's an integer value, I don't get the decimal point. So I still need to do a divide by 1,000 or multiply by 0 0.001. But I don't have to divide by 65,536, multiply by the PT ratio. Everything's ready to go. I just have to get that decimal point in the right spot. If I go to 93, change it back to floating point values. Now I get 0.24 and that's because I left this at secondary. So if I change this to primary, then it would take into account that CT ratio as well. So I've also got another program on here called CAS Modbus Scanner, which is from Chipkin. And the nice thing with this piece of software once you add a meter, you can add a device for the device address. Our meters on the Ethernet port are always defaulted to address one. You can add a request to read holding registers. I set this offset to 180. I can make the length 30, add the request, hit OK, click on this heading and hit poll. And now it polls all the registers. And instead of having to choose which format I want to look at, the CAS Modbus scanner shows me the standard address, the six digit address uh, and the hexadecimal values, characters, the unsigned and signed 16 bit integer values, 32 bit and floating point values.
Now you might notice here the 32-bit values that we saw in ModScan when I typed in register 180. Those values were 8 million. This value here is about 1 billion. Uh, so this comes into the next point. Our Modbus mapping that we have on our website starts at base zero. ModScan's mapping also starts at base zero. Uh, so for the Chipkin automation system, if I wanted to pull the meter and get the 32-bit integer values, I would edit this request and change it to 179. Pull the meters again, and now my 32-bit integer values are, are giving me that 8 million number, which I also got from ModScan32 when I typed in 180. So this shows you just an example of all the values at once instead of having to change through. So that's that's a nice part about this software. Now, because I was just talking about the custom Modbus mapping capability of the Nexus meters, typically you'd have to make this map the first time. Uh, and then you can save this profile and load it into another Nexus 1500 meter. If you happen to have a mixture of Nexus series meters, so if you had 1500, 1500 plus, 1450s, 1250s, uh, 1450s, you can't write this meter's profile. So what we can do is if you click and hold at the top and you drag all the way to the bottom, even if you haven't assigned anything here, you just want to highlight everything. You have to press on your keyboard, Control V. Then you can open up Microsoft Excel. Sorry, I misspoke there. You can highlight everything and do control C to copy it. That was probably because I decided to try and paste something else in there that didn't belong. So bear with me while I open that back up. here, go into the profile. Custom Modbus map. There we go. So I did a control C on the Modbus map. I did a control V in Excel. And now I have all of these values. So if you were to disconnect from this meter. And I've also got a Nexus 1252 on here. Open up the meter profile. And again, because this is a different model of meter, I can't just load the entire Nexus 1500 plus profile into here. But what I will be able to do now that the profile is open, come into the custom Modbus map. So I already have something here. I can highlight everything here. You can come back in here. Do a control C to copy. Come into the map, do a control V. 
Now, if I scroll back up, I have the same points as I had in my Nexus 1500 plus meter. So now I can make this meter and the Nexus 1500 plus meter mapped with primary values, whether you want floating point or integer values, make them show up as primary. So you don't have to use our fixed mapping that we have in the meters. The fixed mapping is always there. It's always available, even if you are using the custom Modbus map but this can make it a little bit easier on the SCADA system side to limit the amount of math that has to be done. Now, just to prove that that works, I have another program here called Modbus Poll. All right, so just in case my sound was off, uh, the original setup that I had had on Modbus Poll was I was looking at the custom registers that we set up in the Nexus 1252 meter. So I was looking at, at these register values and um, I, had, I had highlighted two fields that shouldn't have been highlighted. So if I uh, come back in here, if I look at register 12,289, and just in case I cut out before this, the Mod, Modbus Poll software is also a base one address. So on the Nexus meter, when I want to look at register 12,289, I need to type in register 12,288. Uh, and since I have these values here, uh, if I just wanted to look at phase neutral voltage and my three phases of current, I'll just look at those eight registers. Because I'm looking at a holding register, it automatically puts that four in front. Apply, hit OK. So the default setting of all of these formats is just a signed 16-bit integer. If I come here, I'm looking at a unsigned 32-bit integer secondary values. So I would change this value to a signed 32-bit register. Give me a second to open that up. Again, the uh, Modbus poll is a free version. They do have a paid for version. I'm using the free one and that has a timeout of 10 minutes. So if you do use Modbus poll, you do a test and it times out, you just have to close the software, reconnect. All of my original settings saved. So Modbus TCP, IP address dot 101 for the uh, Nexus meter, Nexus 1252. It starts polling at register 000. So I will change that definition back to register 12,288. Holding register, apply. I will change this value from a signed a uh, 16-bit integer to an unsigned 32-bit integer, and I get 123. Um, I probably cut out. I do have a PT ratio assigned to this meter. So when I look at the polling screen, I see 480 volts. Or 492. So if I just take this Modbus poll value of 132 or 123, multiply that by four, I get 492. And then my next, uh, If 
values while I'm waiting here. I'm looking at current A phase, unsigned integer, four byte float, unsigned integer, we're looking secondary, secondary, and primary. So if I change this to an unsigned floating point, I get zero because my value is less than one. I can change this to a floating point value and I get my 0.19. And if I change this to an unsigned 32 bit, now I get 38, which with the CT ratio that was assigned, uh, you'll see will match the polling screen. So we're looking at 38 volts right here. And you can always add multipliers. So I could do a multiplier of 100. And then this value would show me 38, uh, 39, 38, 41. And then you just have to multiply by uh, 100 or, sorry, divide by 100 or multiply by 0 0.001 in order to get that decimal point to show up. Okay, so that got a little bit long-winded, uh, but that is how you pull Modbus registers from our Nexus series meters. We do have, again, the pre-mapped Modbus registers in this manual that you can use. If you do want to take care of all of the formatting and the math in the meter, so you don't have to deal with it on the uh, SCADA side, you can always set up the custom Modbus mapping for the Nexus meters. You can copy and paste that map into Excel so that you can transfer that map to all of our Nexus branded meters without having to make that map over and over again. I will now open it up to any questions.